Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Historia Politica Publica. In the episode of today, I we talk about the book of Mark Massauer, which is called Governing the World, the story of an idea. I have talked about Mark Massauer in previous episode about his book Dark Continent, in which he covered the 20th century in Europe, more precisely from 1917 until 1989, he analyzed widely the interwar period, the Second World War, the Golden Years, the economic crisis, until the fall of the Berlin, Berlin Wall. And in this book it is interesting because, as in the name it says, the history of an idea mentions the power of the human thought in order to shape the reality that they are all living at that time. So. If I had to do a quick summary about this book, it will be um, about the period from the second half of the 19th century until the 20th century, like the first decade of the 20th century, and it describes how this was a kind of paradoxical era because the ideas of the Leiden has taken root upon the different intellectuals in the whole Europe and the Western world. We see how the ideas that start in the French Revolution had been expanded among the continent, like the ideas of freedom, liberty, and equality. And there was a group of uh, bureaucrats, workers of the states, that they wanted to extend those ideas to establish relations within Europe, but at the same time, they wanted to colonize the other world. So, how could they? kind of ally this idea of respecting each other, while at the same time they were destroying the grounds, killing people in regions of Latin America, Asia or Africa. Well, the way that they do that was through rationalization of what that means to be human. And this book is very interesting because it shows a lot of documents that were uh, being written in those times, the different conferences that were organized uh, in, for example, in La Hague, in the Netherlands and other areas of the world, in which basically they say that, okay, we white people are humans, henceforth we need to respect each other, while the other, the black, the brown, the yellow and so on, they are not humans and therefore we have the right to expand our ideas in those continents. In other words, they legitimized the colonization under the guise that they did not do anything wrong against humans. And even they kind of separate the people living in uh, other continents aside from Europe as barbarians and savage. For example, for them, for those kind of intellectuals, the savage were those people living mainly in Africa, which according to the intellectuals, they had not still developed the state, so they were living in a kind of primitive tribal communities, so they had to be taught about how to create a society. That was a way to legitimize their conquest in those areas, wherever there were other people who they considered barbarians and these were like the Ottoman Empire and also people living in India and other areas in Asia which they were considered as smart enough to create an est a state but they did it in the wrong way according to those people. So starting for the episode number three which is called the Empire of Law, Mark Massauer analyzed how 1885 was a fundamental year for this paradigm of legitimizing the empires. That year it was when the scramble for Africa was firmly established. The scramble for Africa, it is that time in which the countries in Europe like England, France and Germany agreed to split the different countries in Africa to take them for themselves, also the Netherlands and the Dutch. So you have most of the continent um, being part of Europe. So let's say that the current Ghana, Kenya, uh, Tanzania, uh, other areas were part of England, whereas Morocco, 
Fra uh, Algeria, Senegal were part of France, Nigeria part of England, Cameroon part of France, uh, Germany had also some areas at that time and if you see nowadays the map of Africa you see how the, the lines are so neatly draw like if somebody had taken like a compass and a pencil and also kind of uh, do a circle around that and later on draw, uh, uh, drawing the lines in a perfect symmetry and this is because the European countries did not care about how to split the African continent within the rivers, the mountains and so on. They just wanted to take the, their part of it. In that sense, the lawyers were helpful to nationalize colonialism. Uh, sorry, to rationalize colonialism. In that sense, uh, again, people having a wide range of information in order how to uh, legitimize their conquest were held by professionals which job was precisely to give them the the kind of right to do so. This was because formal military occupation as a provisional state was discussed in 1844 and it was said that that could not happen again within Europe. Although, I mean, we see how in 1871 uh, there is the Franco-Prussian War in which the Prussian Empire led siege to Paris in 1871, the year that the Commune was created in the capital of France. But the thing is like this military occupation that in theory could not be uh, attained to European countries, this not apply to savage or barbarian, the kind of categories that were used to name the people living in Africa, in Asia or Latin America. In the conference of The Hague in 1899 in the Netherlands, there was an odd law of bombing from the air, chemical weapons and hollow bullets. Interestingly, as we all know, 70 years later, the United States did not stop to bomb Vietnam, Laos or Cambodia. In fact, the bombing that the United States did in Vietnam, it was double the whole bombing that happened in Europe and in Asia during the Second World War. I will repeat the statistic. The number of bombs that the United States threw in Vietnam during the Vietnam War, it was double. There were twice as many bombs thrown there than in the whole Second World War in Europe and in Asia. Why then? What? Wright had the Odlov bombing from the air in the age in 1899. Well, according to the documents shared by Mark Massauer in the book, it was, quote, only to regulate conflict between two civilized powers. Civilized is underlined. Civilized power referred to those countries in Europe, the white, male, uh, patriarchal-led areas of the continent. In that sense, the inhuman act becomes human. This is said by Elrich Colby in his book, which, I mean, the name is quite illustrative. It's called How to Fight Savage Tribes. Basically, one of his ideas was that because in Africa, the people are believers of the Catholic religion and they think that there is a God upon heaven, if you throw bombs falling from the skies in their societies, they will believe that this is a kind of apocalypse uh, foreshow by the prophets in the Bible. Henceforth, this will be under their eyes a punishment of God because they have been evil, they have been sin, or whatever kind of legitimation they try to seek for themselves. Henceforth, uh, Elrich Colby say, okay, because those people won't blame anybody else apart from themselves, from the bombs throwing in the air, we just need to kill them, destroy them in that way, not going in the kind of face-to-face uh, -face fight, because they will be able to see our face and recognize that we are humans, but just to kind of inflict a divine look-like punishment. 
those were the arguments that were rationalized during those years in this kind of conference in Europe and in the United States. Marma Sauer mentioned that not everybody was so evil at that time, using words that it was it looked perfectly normal for them, apparently. And we, but I don't think so, because if they did such an effort to legitimize their conquest, it's surely because they knew that what they were doing was wrong. And yet, knowing that they were the intellectuals controlling the media and spreading their ideals to the wars, knew that using kind of technical arguments could be able to rationalize their conquest, their colonies, their exploitation upon the war. There were people like Randall Kramer, which was a pacifist, and according to Masauer, he always used the word arbitration, which was a practical term for peace uh, and avoid war and create an idea of diplomacy. So arbitration was a substitute of war. Arbitration could be applied nowadays as the human rights idea if this was to be applied realistically all over the world because arbitration for Randall Kramer, it was uh, an approach to avoid any kind of conflict. Believing in diplomacy to solve any kind of fight that was happening in the world. Arbitration, the idea that nowadays is being dismissed in the war in Ukraine, it was dismissed in the invasion of US in Afghanistan, in Iraq or Vietnam and many other conflicts. But Randall Kramer had a powerful voice at that time and yet he had to face a kind of uh, enemies for all over the place which will not let him go and impose his idea. In that sense, uh, Mark Massauer believed that in the second half of the 19th century there were three strands of internationalism that in the 20th century had reached their greatest appeal. One of those was Randall Kramer with the idea of arbitration which for him it was the one that was less taken into account in the next century, as I have already said. Which are the other strands of internationalism that are uh, analyzed by Mark Massauer? Well, two famous figures in the history of 19th century, which ideals had a great repercussions in the next one. One is uh, Mazzini. Mazzini is like the father of modern nationalism, we could say the theories, he was an Italian which participated in the revolution in the, in the country. He was fundamental for the creation of the state of Italy in 1871 before there were different areas in the country and through his ideas, the action of Giuseppe Garibaldi, were like trying to uh, group all the different peoples in Italy, even though they did not even share the same language, to create the modern nation state of Italy. So Mazzini, obviously for Marma Sauer, which is idea of nationalism in the 20th century, this idea radicalized itself and eventually it becomes the root of fascism. The seed planted by Mazzini grows decades later and becomes this kind of tree of fascist ideas spreading to Italy, precisely where fascism was born. This is not coincidence, obviously. Germany, Spain, Portugal, Austria and other regions of the, the world. The other figure of Internationalism was obviously perhaps the most famous figures about the idea of international solidarity, which was Karl Marx, advocating for the union of working class people all over the world, refusing the idea of nationalism, criticizing the poor people in England and through the eyes of Friedrich Engels, who was very involved in going to the workshops in the United Kingdom, point how the problem was that the working class British people who were exploited by the elites, they blamed their problems in the Irish working class poor people, uh, not on the people who were exploiting them, but rather on the others had, that had come from other countries and they were blamed for stealing their jobs and so on. If we analyze our current society and how the 
there is an amount, a, a great amount of people who are blaming the crisis and their problems for the arrival of immigrants instead of channeling their rage to the allies, which are the ones that are increasing their benefits every year as it is being sown in the newspapers. That means that we have not changed that much overall. And this is a kind of disappointing thought. So Mazzini, his ideas developing fascism, Marx, his idea of international solidarity obviously developed in communism. The idea to create a socialist state and later on destroy the state to establish a communist society in which there will be egalitarianism. And Randall Kramer, a less famous figure, but again, um, Mark Massauer have a particular um, kind of benevolent approach towards him because he mentions that if his ideas had uh, had taken had been taken into account, the world would be a better place. And in fact, interestingly, Randall Kramer, it is buried very close to Karl Marx in the Highgate Cemetery of the of London. So um, this was the chapter number three. The chapter number four is called Science, the Unifier. And Masauer relates how the idea of science served in order to implement uh, the advance on society. I think I will leave this episode now because it is quite long and I want to dedicate just one for this idea, but just to sum up the last one, uh, how the Berlin Act in 1885 served as to legitimate the scramble for Africa, the different runs of internationalism by, uh, carried by Mazzini, Marx and Kramer, idea of arbitration and how the bombing was rationalized from the European powers in order to legitimize their conquest and exploitation in Africa and other continents.